Joko Cruise 2019. I didn't even think there was going to be a 2019. <laughs> Close call. I know, it, all, it almost didn't happen. Uh, how many of you are here for the first time on Joko Cruise? Really? Suckers. <laughs> You, you do know that you're going to be food for the people that have been here on prior cruises, right? Did we explain that to you? So this is Cruise of the Flies. I've been yeah, since playing. So Soil Soil Cruises people! Soylent Cruise. Uh, uh, and how many of you have been on a Joe Cruise before but are here for weird completionist reasons that you can't even explain yourself? Okay. Everybody knows that the new Sea Monkey orientation is the most fun show <laughs> of the week. There are a lot of comedy... It, it is certainly the most earliest show of the week. <laughs> I guess technically this is the first show of the, of the, of the cruise, right? such, as, such as it is. First yeah. impressions last forever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you, I know for a fact there is at least one person on this cruise who uh, sat next to a friend of ours on the plane who has no idea who this person is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jonathan Colton of Joko. Yeah! Uh, it's going to be a huge relief when, in you know, 75 years from now, when we are doing this cruise, and I can come on it totally anonymously because everyone has forgotten. Me. <laughs> Who's that guy up in the Lido eating macaroni and cheese? Who's that weird old man bothering everybody? <laughs> I wish you'd put that guitar down. You know. <laughs> Code what? <laughs> Nobody wants to hear those old video game songs anymore. Is he singing about monkeys again? <laughs> oh, look at him. He has a body. <laughs> First I thought you were complimenting my physique. No. Now I realize it's a science fiction thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in case you don't know this, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Saborin. Prince of all. Okay, we're, we're not going to invoke all of the inside jokes yet. No, no, that's right. But that said, uh, after this presentation, I will be taking on the role for the remainder of the week of Principal Sabori. Yeah! And in this corner, <laughs> this is Storm Di Costanzo, everybody. Yeah! He's holding an empty drinking glass. I believe he's drinking the ghost of an old fashioned. <laughs> no, there's, oh, there's a little left. Yeah, okay. a tiny bit. A tiny I bit. smelled a little scotch earlier, and I think it was coming from that glass. Nice. Chug. Or my pores. Chug. <laughs> chug. Chug. <laughs> Whoa! That's how we roll on Joko Cruise. That's the kind of party it's going to be this week, everybody, so get ready. If there's a couple of final drops in your glass, you got to drink that shit. <laughs> Uh, also, I wish he could be uh, here with us on the, stage. Uh, on the stage, but he's busy doing something. I don't know what. He's probably in the bowels of the ship, making sure everybody's stuff gets loaded. Yeah, the fourth the fourth of us is named Drew Westfall. Yes, yeah, so we should all give him a round of applause, even though he's not here. Because the reason that he's not here is that he is working, probably in the hold. He's probably unpacking a crate with a crowbar or something like that. I believe he's he's battling the, the king of the rats for supremacy. Right. He's cooking he's, all of our dinners right now. He's right below the waterline, punching all the barnacles off the ship. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, the, I tell this joke all the time, and it's funny because it's true. I actually could not run this show because I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to turn it over right now to Paul and Storm. But yeah. welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Woo! It's going to be a great week. It's going to be a lot of Woo! fun. And it starts right now. Nine times. Yeah. Nine times we've done this. And you'd think we'd be better about preparing for this presentation. But no, Storm has not seen it, and I am not positive it is entirely complete. Let's learn together, shall we? First things first, it's gonna be fine. All of you who are new, there's a reason you came on this cruise. And the reason is because you are awesome and this cruise is awesome because of you. So thank you. On our behalf, please give our, yourselves a big gratuitous round of applause for joining us. 
We promise we are going to do everything in our power to make you have the best time possible. And when I say make, I mean force. <laughs> there shall be merriment! Uh, we're going to run through some of the basics here. A lot of it you've gotten in emails from us or you have read online, what have you. But just for comfort's sake, we will run through some of the basics of how this week works. And then however much time let we have left until the safety drill, we will happily take any and all questions you may have. Um, first things first is the remote doesn't want to reach because it sucks. There we go. I'm going to stand over here is what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to hit this button. The, the days, the anchors of the days, so to speak, uh, each day is built around each evening's um, main concert slash dinner. Because there are twice as many of you as fit into this room on the ship, we do each main concert twice. Uh, the, uh, you're split into two teams, as you are aware, the red team. Where's my red team at? Go to the early dinner. Today is at 5.30. Every other day will be at 5. And then they go to the late show. Today at 8. Every other day at 7.30. Then the gold team. Where's my gold team at? Yeah. I don't know, red team. You got, you got some catch up to do. They are on the opposite schedule. They will see the show first and then do dinner. Um, your lanyard, which you have received, which reflects whether you are on the gold or the red team, or for some of you have a blue lanyard indicating you are in Club SRO, that lanyard is your ticket, so to speak, to the main concert events happening in this room each night. Uh, and also will serve as your ticket to the San Juan concert. More about that in a moment. But make sure you have your lanyard with you when you are attending the main concert shows in here. Any other, there are lots of other events happening in here. You don't need the lanyard for that. You're, I mean, you're welcome to wear it around because it's got your badge with your name on it and it's friendly and everything. And it's fashionable, uh, but it's only required for these shows. Uh, more about the shows and events. Uh, there's all kinds of, as we know, shows and events happening all week. The schedules are uh, can be found in numerous ways. Whoops. Online, those of you who uh, maintain the internet for any portion or the duration of this trip, maybe you own a satellite, we don't know. <laughs> you know, you joke, but I honestly, it's, I was not joking. True. I was not joking. <laughs> I thought I saw somebody launching into a geosynchronous orbit a week ago. Um, but it can be found on our SCED page, jokocruise2019.sked.com. You can also find it on the pre-printed schedule that everyone received this morning, I hope. It is, I would say, 96% accurate because there have been changes since we had to send it to the printer because that's the nature of this event. There will be posted schedules throughout the ship. Uh, there are complete schedules in the elevator lobbies on the main floors where the uh, various performance spaces are. That is deck two, deck three, and deck nine, and deck 10. I think Deck 10, there should also be posted nearby each of those a little map that shows you our name for the venues. So when you find stuff, you can look at that to see where you need to go. Uh, and also uh, your daily newsletter that you'll receive each evening uh, at Turndown, I believe, will have the next day's schedule in it as well. Those will be as up to date as humanly possible. One note about the uh, newsletter you'll get at Turndown. You're actually going to get sort of two newsletters. There's one that's going to have the schedule, and there's one that the ship sends out that has more basic information. So don't be surprised when you see two each night. We're going to let them battle it out for supremacy. That's what we're going right. to do. Um, also, uh, the shows, for those of you uh, who maybe don't dig on big crowds so much or don't need to go get into the main theater for a particular show, and also the people who have joined Club SRO. If you know what that is, then you know you're in it. Or if you know you're in it already, then you know what that is probably. Um, we simulcast the show in several different places. I believe it is being simulcast on everyone's uh, in-room in TVs. Uh, and it is also archived and uh, the main concert events. In fact, most events that are happening in the main theater this year will on the next day, roughly, be archived and show up in the on-demand menu on your in-room TV. So you can see just about every event that happens in this room and several that will be happening in BB King's as well. Um, 
Uh, oh, it's also being simulcast in... Do I have that here? Yes, this is that part. Okay. Uh, it's also being simulcast in a couple of places on the ship. The Billboard Onboard Lounge, which is on deck uh, two directly outside this door, if you want to watch the show in a more sort of hangy outy, uh, loungy vibe. Uh, and, and want to play some video games while you watch the show out of one corner of your eye. How about that arcade that Mr. Stormy Costanzo helped make happen, forced into being, it was moving around cabinets this morning at 11 a.m.? Yeah, the stickers that were on the loading just kind of started coming off onto me, and I just decided to roll with it. I'm expecting you to go full uh, Brazil and just get covered in them and then disappear. <laughs> yeah, maybe by day five. Uh, also, in a more theater-like, sort of a more sedate, quiet atmosphere, in BB King's, uh, each main concert will also be simul simulcast there as well. Uh, as mentioned, the uh, events will show up usually the next day on your on-demand on TV. Um, we have a default policy in this room of no camping. We will clear this room out. This is particularly for events happening during the day. Obviously, we're clearing this room out after the concerts because you've got to go to dinner or what have you. Um, but. Uh, to prevent people from just camping in here all day, uh, Comic Con style, uh, our default policy. Yeah, our default policy is to clear this room out between each event. At the discretion of the uh, various helper monkeys working the doors, we may skip that if it's obvious that there's enough room and there's not much of a line for the next event. Uh, but please do not expect to be able to plunk yourself down in a seat and just stay here all day for it. Uh, that goes for you, McElroy fans. <laughs> Uh, Club SRO, uh, I spoke about these in uh, Billboard on Borb in the club clubby atmosphere and in BB King's in the more theater-like atmosphere. If you do not want to watch the main show here, those are two great ways. Everyone is welcome, not just the people who are part of Club SRO. Um, so we covered that. San Juan, big San Juan land concert happening on Wednesday. Uh, again, to go over the details of that, at 4 p.m., the venue, which is called Bahia Urbana, the doors will officially open there. There will be uh, food and drink available on site. We have not been able to confirm whether or not they take credit cards. I believe they do. 99 point We're, many we're reasonably places. certain that they yes. take credit cards. They certainly take cash. Uh, and also it is of note that there is no outside food or drink allowed uh, on Bahia Urbana, but water bottles are fine. But beyond that, you have to purchase any food or drink on site. The show begins at 5 o'clock, starting with Paul and Storm. And also featuring Toon Yards, Jill Sobiel, Jonathan Colton, and your headline act for the evening, some group, uh, the they might be, must, are, the, yeah. some sort of giants are performing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they might be giants will perform. The show should end at about 11 p.m. Um, uh, the ship departs at 1 a.m. Everyone has to be back on the ship at 12.30 a.m. We are very near as this map, uh, well, also, I'm sorry, the map that is coming up shortly uh, will indicate we are very near. It's only a five to eight minute walk from the ship, from when you step off the ship until you step onto Bahia Urbana. So everyone does not have to come sprinting back to the ship immediately after the show ends. But bear in mind, uh, post-show, there will probably be longer wait times and lines to get back onto the ship. Uh, but everybody does have to be back on board a half hour before we depart. Uh, oh, and if you have mobility issues, there, there uh, is transport available. Yes. Uh, we also, while it is set up as a stand-up rock concert, so to speak, the whole area in front of the stage is for standing, there are a good number of seats available towards the rear and down uh, by the sides. There is also accessible seating that will be set up near the sound booth in the middle of the, the sort of square area. Um, you can see on this map here, here, wait, I've got a laser pointer. Wow. A laser pointer that doesn't work very well on this screen. So I'm going to use the, the analog laser pointer, which is Storm. So you'll step off the ship, you'll go walk up the pier, you'll take turn right, you'll walk for five or six or seven minutes. <laughs> Not in real time. This bridge, which will be very obvious when you get to it, will be the area where you will uh, enter and exit Bahia Romana once the door is open. You will cruise around here to this whole big beautiful area where you will watch people standing on this stage and perform. <laughs> <laughs> this area up here, there is a restaurant and bar. There are ample restrooms, including accessible restrooms. Oh, you can only walk so far with your fingers, Storm. There it is, yeah, we got a more power. Oh, let's, let's battle it out now. 
red versus green, <laughs> in a Christmas war. Um, there are ample restrooms both behind the uh, food area and also some porta potties back here. There are additional food. Uh, we were told they were trucks. They might be food stations. We are not positive, but they will be in this general area. There is a smoking area right down here. It's just, it's just going to be smoking the whole yeah, time. It's just going to be a, one big vape cloud. Uh, and oh. then you, you can enter or exit a, as you like uh, the, at any time as long as you have your lanyard. You can enter and exit via the bridge. You can also exit only uh, up by the street. This is Highway 1, they call it here. Uh, but if you want to get back in, you have to come back down and around to the bridge. There will also be, we haven't confirmed all the details yet, but two uh, small local charities on site who will be sharing information about what they do for the people of Puerto Rico. And of course, they will be accepting donations. And actually, while we're here, thank you to everyone who donated to our Unidos uh, Puerto Rico campaign. Thank you for that. Yes. Uh, it's still ongoing, uh, but uh, come Wednesday, we will be donating in excess, thanks to uh, matching donors as well, in excess of $70,000 yeah. to Unidos Puerto Rico. Going for Hurricane Relief. Um, Many of you are new monkeys. There are plenty of, I mean, every event on, on this ship is, almost every event is designated to be new monkey friendly. You don't have to have been here before to take part in just about anything happening here. That said, we have a number of events uh, designed specifically to help you new monkeys acclimate to our weird and wonderful environment. Events uh, that'll naturally put you together with other folks uh, who you'll find are awesome. Yes. Uh, one of them, for example, uh, immediately following the late show this evening in BB Kings is a new monkey karaoke session. Anybody can show up, but only new monkeys, and we're going on the honor system here, only new monkeys can, uh, can sing that first night. Please feel free to go and encourage your new monkey friends. In karaoke, there is also a dance party happening uh, later this evening. Uh, again, everyone is welcome, but it is designed to be a big come join and dance new people and get into the rhythm that we are setting. Uh, there are also, a, a, there's a bar crawl that starts at 10.30 up in the Crow's Nest, aka 10 Forward, which is on deck 10 directly above us. Um, and there are a whole bunch of others. We have tagged a number of events in the online schedule uh, as New Monkey, particularly New Monkey Friendly. If you still have online access to that, if you run a search on the sked uh, just for the, the name New Monkey, uh, everything that has been given a, a subcategory of that will show up. And those are particularly geared towards new people joining. But that said, um, it's a very welcoming atmosphere. We know it can be a little overwhelming to see 2,000 people that you don't really know all in this space. But we promise everyone is here to have just as good a time as you and is just as excited to welcome you into the fold and get to know you. Is Friendly Fez coming up? Is that uh, on here? Oh, you know what? That's not in this presentation, so go ahead and mention it. Another thing that's great for everybody, not just new monkeys, uh, is you'll see a, a smiling Fez symbol. It's the Friendly Fez, which was originally something in the game room to indicate, hey, I have an open seat at my game. I would love someone to, to come join me. And now we've propagated it uh, for all purposes, and I think those signs are available in the game library area on deck, Three? Three? Yes. Thank you. See, you're already acclimated. That's great. <laughs> you're already <laughs> correcting us. <laughs> That's as it should be. And um, you can also bring that, like, for dining purposes, if you want to encourage people to join you, uh, or you can look for that. So if you see that symbol, and I believe it's printed in that blue book guide that we sent out, if you look for that, it's an open door. Uh, if you are at a loss for some information that you need, and you generally need help, there are a number of ways of getting it. Uh, we have a number of volunteers working throughout the week that we call our helper monkeys. When they are on duty, I believe they will be wearing, um, uh, are they wearing the vests? Is the helper monkeys the, the helper vests? monkeys? Do we have any helper monkeys here to, at the, the moment? The vests. No, uh, no, I didn't mean people helping, here. I've been in the back of the room the helping work the show. But thank you, yes, new monkeys are not allowed to be helper monkeys. That's true, because we want you to fully enjoy your first... No, not that it's not enjoyable to be a helper monkey. We want you to be fully immersed... Wait a second. Shut up! We want you to be fully immersed in the experience of enjoying a Joko cruise for the first time without having to be on duty, per se. And we want you to be familiar with the workings of Joko Cruise before you uh, segue into a helper role. 
Uh, that said, the, the helper monkeys will be around at uh, most every event. Uh, you can identify them and, and they should be able to answer most questions that you have. Also, we have a program uh, of helper, specific helper monkeys called New, New Monkey Ambassadors who have volunteered to wander around, I believe, wearing pink sashes. Mm -hmm. uh, and th if they are wearing their sash, they are happy to answer any question you have or help you figure out a thing. Tell them, I don't know much about gaming. What game should I play that's easy and, and, and isn't too hard to, to learn the rules of and such? They are more than happy to sort of help you get into the experience and do this motion a lot, I guess. I don't <laughs> do know what that, that is. You approach a helper monkey, they will not know what you're doing. Yeah, don't, <laughs> do not approach the helper monkey. Or um, also, they, but they, therefore, the, the Joe Co. Cruise events, if you have general questions about um, your shipboard account or things about how the ship works, then you would go to the, the Hall of America front desk the in the insane bro. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, if you think of this as a big floating hotel on its side, at a convention happening in that hotel, anything convention related, you can come to the helper monkeys, anything hotel related, like your room and such, go to the hotel, so to speak, or the, the ship's uh, desk. That said, we do also have a Joko Cruise info desk, which is in the atrium, the center of the ship, down on deck one. Uh, there are posted hours for that where we'll have helper monkeys on hand for that. Uh, so there's all sorts of ways that you can uh, get the information that you need. The Shadow Cruise. How many people are completely unfamiliar with the concept of the Shadow Cruise? A few of you. Essentially, when we first started Joko Cruise, unbidden by us, uh, our wonderful group of fans decided to just sort of self-organize, like the wonderful nerds that you are, and just start doing things in the spaces that we had available on the ship. Some of it was gaming. I believe the first one is we got an email saying, they have, they have these new devices called iPhones. Can we do they, an iPhone bell choir? Yep. And and there's only one answer to that. Choir. Yeah. Um, but we realized very quickly that you all were very good at and very eager to organize events amongst yourselves. Everything from book clubs to dance lessons to support groups to uh, video game playing to uh, wine appreciation. Just about anything you can think of. Uh, there, oh, there's lock picking seminars for yeah. breaking into each other's houses, I guess. Yeah, please do not put that <laughs> skill to practice on the yeah. ship. <laughs> but it, it very quickly evolved into what we call the Shadow Cruise, where we just give a whole bunch of space and time on board and allow you all to submit events, uh, which many, many of you did. Fully half the programming on the ship this week is Shadow Cruise events. Uh, and they're all listed in the schedule. They are all organized by your fellow sea monkeys, and I'm sure they would be very happy for you to come and take part in them. Performers and office hours. We have, I believe, if you count them individually, something like 36 or 37 performers and, and guests on board with us this week. They are out amongst you all. In addition to doing shows here, you, you may run into them in the buffet line or see them uh, at the gym because I dare all go into the gym. I know I know those performers always at the gym. Uh, you may uh, collectively be on your ninth hamburger on day one with them next to you at the dive-in bar up on deck nine. Um, the, the performers are here for the week, along with all of you. Uh, many of them, uh, this is another thing that, that sort of evolved organically over the first couple of years, where they will hold semi-official and very informal gatherings in different places on the ship, uh, holding office hours, as we call it. Uh, just sort of meet-ups, drink-ups. Yeah, similarly, I think the first one was John Hodgman was on, and he said, you know, I feel like uh, I'm just gonna go to the hot, hot tub, tub and invite people, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna be in the hot tub from one till three, come on by. And that was, that was pretty much how it came about. So many of them are having various office hours events, and many will add them uh, as the week progresses, we will add them to the schedule uh, as we can. Uh, but pay attention for those. Also, if you, know, if you see a performer out just and about on the ship, someone you are a fan of, uh, do not be afraid of going up and saying hello to them. They know when they are out on the ship that they are in the public eye. Uh, they would be more than happy to speak with you for the most part. That said, be sure to read the room and the situation and respect their boundaries if they're uh, in a uh, situation where uh, they are obviously 
not really in a place to socially interact, like if they're with their families, or if they're having dinner, or if they're asleep in their cabin. <laughs> um, oh. They're rushing down the hall, and their arm is bleeding, and they're saying, oh my god, get me to the infirmary. <laughs> yeah. That's probably not a good time. And again, to take a lesson that was, that was brought very early on by, by John Hodgman, while autographs are not, a, it's, they're not forbidden by any stretch, and in fact, most of the performers are having at least one signing session towards the end of the week, if you would like to get their autograph, uh, it's, as we say, it is not forbidden, but that said, uh, if you might, given the situation that we are in, rather than come at someone with a piece of paper and a pen and ask them to scrawl something, maybe take that time and just have a brief interaction, such as by saying, hi, my name is, state your name, uh, do not say state your and name, I, <laughs> and I very much enjoy your work, and see where that goes from there. Uh, and it can be just as valuable and I would say even more memorable than having a little piece of paper with some scrawl on it. Um, so just food for thought. Uh, another very popular element of Joko Cruise that again evolved entirely organically. Uh, there's a whole shit ton of tabletop gaming on board this year. A shit ton being 1.2 times. Yes, we actually, we have literally more than a ton of games in our game library that have been donated by various uh, sponsors over the years and such. That game library is located in the upper dining room, which is deck three. If you were to walk into it, it's on your left. That'd be the starboard side. You'll see all the shelves. Uh, they are organized, I believe, by playtime. Yeah, so if you only want to play a short game, medium, and long. Yes. Uh, and... Uh, where to game? Uh, the main gaming area, so to speak, any time that there is not dinner happening in the main dining room, we are have, the tables are all intended to be clear and just have tablecloths on them and you are welcome to game there. Um, uh, there are in fact several tables that are dedicated full time to gaming, including during dinner. Because y'all are hardcore. <laughs> Uh, also, the Lido Marketplace, the buffet area up on uh, Deck 9, is a wonderful place with a whole bunch of tables that's got great space for different types of gaming, and everywhere else on the ship because we rented this whole damn boat. One thing about gaming in, in the main dining room that Jen Ellis, who puts together the game programming, said, please, please, please tell people this. There's so many people gaming and meeting up in the game room. This year, at the, I think at the front of deck three, near the library, there's a map of the dining room, and if you're meeting people there, mark on that map. It's a whiteboard. Uh, it's where a whiteboard map. Find you. What's that? Yeah. It's a whiteboard map, so you can just yes. Feel so free to please do, and that's going to make it easier for whomever you're gaming to find you, etc. And so. they also have a number of volunteers called the cardboard concierge who are holding regular hours each day who are more than happy to help you choose a game if you are unfamiliar or, or help you get together uh, Yeah, with tell them gamers. what kind of games you like, or if you don't know, they'll offer some suggestions. Yeah. There is also, for the first time this year, again, the charge led by my good friend Storm De Costanzo, Woo! Console Gaming officially organized on board. Um, why does it say Lower Vista Dining Room? Oh, you know why? Oh, because I copied the headline, but I did not change the elements. <laughs> This is a dining room, you're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> so, pay no attention to the screen behind this person. <laughs> Console gaming is happening up on deck 10 in the area that is labeled EXC Exploration Central. Last year, you might have remembered it as the uh, Exploration Cafe, Cafe which is yeah. where the coffee was that has moved over to the Crow's Nest 10 Forward area. So, if you go to the console gaming and you're looking for a coffee, you're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> So there's a, how many consoles are set up? 42. 42 consoles in 26. Wow! Will be set up. We up didn't even ask them to make it 42. <laughs> they will be available essentially 24 seven. They will also, they also, this is uh, in, from the library. Um, that's, yep, that's all wrong. Uh, another organic thing that's evolved over the years. We have an officially dedicated crafting room on board. Because on this cruise ship, uh, Microsoft created a room with a whole bunch of uh, desktops in it where you can learn to send emails to your grandkids. <laughs> we didn't think that would be super applicable to most of you here. So we clear out all of those computers and we have a whole bunch of table space. Uh, that is happening in the digital workshop. <laughs> like to think of it as digital, digital, digital workshop. <laughs> 
that is on deck three. There are uh, classes and events happening throughout the week there, and there are a great deal of uh, crafting supplies organized by Christine Fellows and uh, uh, Fiona's Fineries. Yeah. Thanks to them. Uh, you are also, of course, welcome to craft. Uh, and do your fiber arts and such anywhere on the ship, because it's our ship. Uh, I know there's a, a couple of shadow events uh, happening in one of the bars um, where I believe people are, I, I don't know, th throwing yarn balls at each other or something. <laughs> yeah, the heart of crafting is just throwing yarn. Uh, now, there's a lot of stuff happening on this ship, and sometimes you just want to chill out in some place that is not your cabin. Yay! We have a number of... <laughs> We have a number of places uh, throughout each day designated as quiet zones. Unfortunately, due to the fact we have a whole out, a whole sold out ship and the nature of the spaces we have on board, last year we had one area that was dedicated 24-7 as a quiet zone. We weren't really able to really make the logistics of that work. So instead, there are several spaces uh, throughout the day. Um, the Crow's Nest Bar from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. is designated to be a quiet space. It's obviously not going to be a hundred percent quiet uh, because there's console gaming happening that will have some sound spillover and there's also occasionally events happening. There's a, a one side of the Crow's Nest has been turned into a presentation space which of course we're now calling the holodeck. <laughs> There will occasionally be events happening there, so there will be some sound spillover. It's not going to be deathly quiet, but it's a large space and it should be easy enough for someone to get far enough away uh, yeah. to have a generally quiet See, it'll be super chill. Area. Just super chill. Um, that's from 8 until 3 uh, pretty much every day. Uh, also, the observation deck, also known on some signs as the sky deck, which is up on deck 11, the forward of the ship, which is also, by the way, uh, at nighttime, every night, the captain uh, has agreed to turn off the lights up there at 10 p.m. every night for stargazing. Uh, important note, it is, it is outside. Yes, so. this is outdoors, beneath the big angry ball in the sky. That said, we know some of you like that. Uh, that is 8, eight until 6 every day. Uh, and then the Lido Marketplace, the starboard side, which if you're facing the yes. front of the ship, is the right of the ship. Uh, every evening from 9.30 onward. Again, it's not going to be completely silent um, because the Canaletto restaurant is on that side uh, and they have to finish their service, but it's a whole long area and you can find more towards the after the ship. It should be a much quieter zone for you. Uh, just, these are just you know, places where you can be near people but not have them all up in your business making noise. And uh, speaking of getting in your business... And, and these oh, will be posted in the schedule every day, so yes. you have to have it memorized now. It'll be posted yeah. for you. And they are consistent every day. Speaking of consistent every day, will you please welcome the fourth, and some might say most important leg of yeah. the Joko Cruise uh, management, Drew Westfall. Yeah. I'm, I'm honored to be a leg. <laughs> Drew, uh, is uh, the main, <laughs> Drew is the main person responsible for how many pallets? Is it this year? 62 pallets worth of crap? I have two, three, uh, three semi tractor trailer rigs plus uh, two box trucks, I think. Plus wow. a couple of minivans. Keep on trucking. <laughs> Keep on trucking. And all but, two, all but two of those pallets were filled with tote bags. <laughs> and chairs. It looks like we've got even more to put down. Yeah, we got more. We just have yeah. to stop for this part. Yep. Uh, let's keep plowing through so we can get to some questions. Uh, the internet. It is a thing that exists more in theory than in practice on board. Uh, it is slow. It is expensive. Uh, it is slow and it's expensive. And it is not terribly reliable. But that said, it is available. Uh, they have packages per day that you can sign up for. There should have been uh, something in your cabin regarding that. Uh, there's different prices depending on the speed service that you get, and also there are prorated discounts depending on how many days you purchase your internet package. It is satellite internet, so it is inherently slower than most of the internet that you are used to in your homes and workplaces at this point. That said, it is there. It's not only satellite internet, it's like the slow satellite. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, like the kind that is powered by a, a hamster on a wheel? Oh yeah, yeah, you can see it in the sky. It's just, it looks like a star because it just never moves and it's not geosynchronous. Uh, that also said, um, San Juan is a U.S. port. 
uh, everyone's phone uh, plans should be active there, and there should be plentiful internet in various uh, cafes and restaurants and such there. We have not actually physically been to Tortola ourselves. It is our assumption that, it, like most other islands, uh, in the Caribbean will have varying degrees of, of similar internet service in the various cafes and restaurants and such. Half Moon Key is a private island in the Bahamas that is actually owned by Holland America. There is no internet service there beyond what is available on the ship. But if you need to you know, get phone calls done or get some interneting done to a degree and you don't want to pay for internet, you can wait till either of those two ports of call. Uh, also, uh, as has been noted, uh, some of your fellow sea monkeys over the year have developed over the years have developed a system called Twitter. <laughs> Damn it, that pun. Uh, for that, which is a social media platform that works on the ship's network without requiring internet connection. Uh, those of you who had have uh, active user accounts should have received a code that would allow you to sign up for Twitter now that you are here on board. If you did not receive a code and want one or you misplaced your code, you can go to the info desk in the atrium on desk, deck one, our info desk, the Joe Capruz info desk, during its regularly manned hours and they can get you your code. There is also uh, a whole instruction sheet that the people who developed it put together that you received an email. We should have copies of that available as well to help walk you through the whole process of signing up for it using Twitter and its various services. Uh, the code of conduct. Um, it is our greatest wish and our primary responsibility that you all have a happy, safe, an enjoyable time on board the ship. And we hope to never have to deal with any issues relating to the code of conduct. That said, it does apply to every passenger on this ship, whether uh, sea monkey, performer, or crew, uh, everyone is asked to abide, is required to abide by our code of conduct. If you are experiencing what you believe to be a violation of the code of conduct, or you are a witness to what you believe to be a violation of the code of conduct, we want to hear about it. The best thing you can do is to call 74701. That is the extension of, we have a, uh, for the first time this year, I'm afraid he's not here, I forgot to ask him to come to say hi. We, we brought on a person whose full-time position here on the ship is as our code of conduct representative and the official ship listener. Colin Adamo is his name. Let's give him a round of applause wherever he is. That phone number uh, connects directly to a phone like this that he will have on him at all times and works anywhere on the ship. Um, and uh, we want to make sure to get you taken care of and as safe as possible. We also, if you wish to report a violation but don't necessarily want to do it in person or to make a phone call, uh, we have uh, code of conduct violation report forms available at the Joko Cruise info desk. Um, again, the code of conduct is posted in numerous places throughout the ship. It is also uh, written in the blue book that you received during check-in. Once again, familiarize yourself with it, please. Uh, and then we sh hopefully shall never have to think of it for the duration of this week. And you did all sign the code of conduct in order to embark this vessel. So you have all agreed to follow the code of conduct. <laughs> so please follow the code of conduct. And again, we hope that it never is an issue. Uh, this is one of the last slides. Um, ready for some math? Woo! This year, uh, by my calculation, take that for what it's worth, we have 344 total programmed events, not including our meals, which adds up to 605 hours of things happening between now and next Saturday morning. Which also works out to be 200 times, oh, excuse me, nearly half of that 292 hours of it is Shadow Cruise events, self-organized by you, uh, which works out to be 25.46 <laughs> days worth of stuff <laughs> happening over seven days and change. So obviously, you're not going to be able to do everything. Says you. But it's all good. <laughs> Unless you have a time turner, exactly. in which case, please see me after this presentation. Um, that's 3.63 days per day. Yes. <laughs> day per day measurements. And good thing we're running 72 hour days on this cruise. <laughs> um, but rather than... Overclocked management at this, this point. The advice we like to give in this case is not to worry about the fact that you are missing something good that is happening, but rather to revel in the fact that no matter what time it is, something, something good, good is happening. happening. Yeah.
In fact, usually numerous good things, numerous awesome things. It's like a, a choose your own adventure book, but all the endings are good. Hey. <laughs> um, and finally, we ask you to bear in mind the convention 531 rule. Yep. Many of you familiar with it already. Yep. Please get yourselves a minimum of five hours of sleep per night for your own mental health. Yep. Three meals per day so that you do not collapse and die. And at least one shower or bath yeah. per day. <laughs> that is as much for your benefit as everyone else's. Oh, wait, it's weird to wash your hands. Oh, yes. Wash your hands. Uh, we talk about it a lot. There's a reason for it. We are in a closed system for a week. It is very, very easy for uh, bugs and viruses and evil microscopic things to get about. The best thing you can do is to wash your hands regularly and thoroughly. Uh, we will be cleaning things like the arcade machines and the consoles, but especially if you're doing stuff like that, you'll want to wash your hands before and after. Um, there are also... Uh, 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 what is the word? Boy, I'm already falling apart. It's not even the end of uh, the hand sanitizer. hand sanitizer stations throughout the ship. Uh, while those do not automatically kill things like norovirus, it is still a good thing, uh, a good practice to have. But regular, good washing of your hands uh, will help everybody, especially you. Elbow uh, bumps. What's that? I, oh, yes. And also, maybe uh, if you're particularly concerned, rather than handshakes, maybe a, a, an old elbow bump or just a, I don't know, a wave or a blow them a high five. It's not rude, it's prude. And yes. <laughs> prude. <laughs> Actually, not on a loading dock. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I've been all day. Yeah. Sarah, can, down we, there. can we get you to grab a, a microphone? Uh, please welcome uh, the hardest working person uh, here, tw anywhere remotely near the stage, Sarah Scrimshaw, our uh, stage manager. And also here's Chris Saul. Uh, if you have any questions at this point, particularly people who have never been here before, we are here to try and get them answered. Raise your hand if you have any question you would like answered. And, um, keep, and we're going to be having a management Q&A later in the week, so this is for... Yeah, yeah, so this is less philosophical and more like operational questions. So one right down here to start. Hi, guys. Whoop. Turn on. Very well. Hello. There you hey, go. guys. Hey, Hi. my name's Nathan. I'm a new monkey. Um, I know you mentioned earlier inside jokes. Are there any other inside jokes or references? Are there, there any other? There are no inside jokes. <laughs> there are no inside jokes. There are no references. Other um, than the fact that Jim Boja is really, really good at tuning. Yeah. <laughs> there, there really are. There are a lot of them. Uh, but really, you don't, you don't have to know them. If you pick up on them, it's great. You're not expected to know them. And new ones grow all the time. And that's something we love. So... Uh, Feel free to ask any, you know, a current monkey that's near you if they're laughing at a thing, like, what was that? Why was that funny? And actually, that's a great way. If, if you see that someone does not look like a new monkey, ask them, and then I bet they will What do all monkeys look at like? Speaking of, speaking of uh, interactions, one thing I neglected to mention, uh, many of you have picked up uh, Feel free to hold them high if you have one on your person, the friendshipping social interaction buttons. The red and green buttons that were uh, given to us by our friends Jen and Trin from the Friendshipping Podcast. Feel free to wear them. They indicate whether someone is eager and happy to uh, initiate social interaction or if they're wearing a red one. If you prefer uh, to not interact, that's fine. Please, If you see the buttons, please respect uh, the wearer uh, and their wishes. Uh, even if they initiate contact with you, that's their choice. So uh, don't necessarily think that means that you can go ahead and initiate contact with anyone wearing the red button. All right. Uh, um, but yeah, there there are a bunch of inside jokes. You'll get them quite quick enough. And we're going to make a whole bunch of new ones this year, too. So, uh, In fact, go ahead. Say a random word. <laughs> no, I said him. It's him. Ah, guava. Guava. Guava's the new inside joke. Okay, now here's the thing. Guava's the thing. During tonight's introduction of each show tonight, I'm going to make some reference to guava. You guys lose your freaking minds. <laughs> You will know. It's just between us. Class of 19. Guava. It's the Guava Cruise. Uh, all right, where's our next question? Up here. Go ahead. Uh, I notice on the schedule there are some things that are limited. How do you sign up for those things? Is it on Facebook yeah. for that particular Shadow Cruise person's thing? Or is it the Shadow Monkeys? Where do you do that? 
Uh, to be honest, we don't really exercise any control or oversight for the Shadow Cruise events other than providing the space, so I can't personally answer their process if it is an event that, that you know, only eight people or 20 people or whatever can, can take part in. It may well, if it's not described in the description of the event, it is probably first come, first serve. That's a guess on my part. Um, beyond that, I could not really say authoritatively. I imagine it's just because of the space that it's been assigned. It could be, yeah. Or just the nature of the thing that they are doing. Sorry, it's not a more complete answer, but... Uh, anyway, where's our next question, anyone? We've got about 10-ish minutes. We're, we're basically going until they start doing the, the drill. Oh, stretch? Okay, got one up here, too, if you want to send, send someone up to the top. I'll just yell loudly. Okay, we'll do this one up here, and then we'll do that one back there. Go ahead, yell loudly, sir. In theory, Ooh. in theory, our schedule is whitelisted on the ship's Wi-Fi, meaning you, sh in theory, can connect to it without signing up for the internet, as long as you connect it to the ship's Wi-Fi. We tried to make that happen last year. They said it was going to happen. It didn't really work. That said, and it's hoping. And in general, we've learned this from experience over the years when the technology goes down, basically BSG, that there should always be an analog, low-tech version if all yeah. else fails. Yeah, for those of you who are brand new to the cruise, last year was the very first of eight cruises where we did not completely shut down the internet on board at least once. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of you with a lot of devices. Speaking of which, actually, it's a good point. If yeah. you do sign up for the internet, a very important and helpful thing you can do to help on bandwidth, turn off the things that are automatically updating, like Backblaze and iCloud and uh, things like that, your iTunes auto-updating, turn those off if you can, please. It will be very helpful. Back here. Hey there, my name is Ben. I'm a brand new monkey. Um, nice to meet y'all. Uh, I love my colorful nerd friends, but where did the purple hair start? Does it let you into a secret deck that only purple hair people can go into? <laughs> I bet if well, you there there's this, there's someone with purple hair, they might, they might do you. Yeah. There was this monster with one eye and one horn on the cruise a couple of years ago. <laughs> no, uh, actually, I don't know that purple is a specific theme. Nope. Uh, it just appears to be a popular color on board, but you can see there is a, a purple rainbow. Purple guava 19! Purple guava! <laughs> All right, see, we're building our own... <laughs> building our own cruise right here in this room. Uh, who's next? What do we, who we got next? We got one right here, and do we have another... One up here too, so let's get if, down here and then up there. If I forgot to eat lunch because I was trading Pokemon, <laughs> is there hey, somewhere? Did you say somewhere? if I forgot to eat lunch because I was playing Pokemon? I was trading because you, we have you know special trades. You can only do one a day. Fair enough. Okay. And uh, we won't have internet soon. So, uh, is there somewhere I can go to eat before late dinner? Can like get uh, something? Yeah. To eat? I, yes. I, the, I, there are times when the Lido buffet shuts down for a certain period of time as they reset things. Mm -hmm. uh, but that said, there should be somewhere to eat somewhere on the ship just about any time until late night. And, by the way, speaking of late night, to reconfirm for those of you who have been here before and to let you know, for those of you who are new, uh -oh. the pizza station up at the Lido yeah. Buffet is now 24 hours. So if all else fails, that will be there. Yeah, and usually the Lido on deck nine. So pretty much any time there should be some food options available to you, including room service, uh, if if you like. Is it um, Sorrento's? Uh, we have actually labeled the pizza area Sorrento's. Yeah! We're working on getting an actual sign put up one way or another. Was there one upstairs? Sweet. There was one up there, I believe. Go ahead. Oh, wait, we got a microphone coming. If there was an activity that was being talked about on Facebook, but it was not a Shadow Cruise event that's in the schedule, once we're out at sea and don't have internet, how do you discuss things like where Good point. to be? Good question. There's a couple of ways. Uh, for the people who are using Twitter, that is an option to try and organize events. Also, in the Explorers Cafe, which is on deck three, I believe, towards the aft of the ship, yes. there's a whole number. Thank you for mentioning that, actually. I forgot to mention this. We have what we call our analog Twitter, so to speak. We have a whole bunch of easels and easel pads set up where people can put random messages to people, 
to others or to, to want to organize games or events, you can just write on there. Uh, as, as pages fill up, I believe they post them on the walls and different areas. Uh, there's also a number of easels in the game room specifically for organizing games. Uh, but that is one great way to try and organize things is using those easels. And feel free to go by and check them out uh, if you're looking for things to do. Uh, or to just leave happy messages for your friends. Uh, who's next? Who else we got? One over here? And Sarah has one. Um, so I saw on some of the um, actual events that there was a sign-up list that you had to go and put your name down on. Oh, yes. So where are those? Uh, there are a number of events such as the Sea Monkey Open Mic Night uh, to sign up for. If there are events like that, uh, like performative type events, those sign up lists are uh, at the Joe Cruz Yellow Desk. Yep. Or at the what? <laughs> Good afternoon, Sea Monkeys. My name is Becca, and on behalf of the officers and crew of Osterdam, a very warm welcome aboard. In a moment's time, we will be conducting our mandatory passenger emergency muster drill. Your participation is required and attendance will be recorded. This muster drill will ensure that you know where to go and what to do in an emergency. Guests who are prepared are less likely to panic and create a risk to themselves and to others. For this reason, guests who refuse to participate in this drill will not be permitted to sail with the ship. Once again, welcome aboard Osterdam, and thank you for your attention and cooperation. Okay, that, that means we've got about five minutes left here. So if it is a, a performative type of uh, official event like that, the sign-up sheet. <laughs> the sign-up sheet. Oh, I see. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were cursing that much. I would like to be Okay. Think about what you did. Uh, there may be another announcement. How are we looking? Okay. <laughs> is someone recording this? Oh, good. <laughs> Your attention, please. This is a drill. I repeat, this is a drill. We are now beginning our mandatory passenger emergency muster drill. Well, attention, crew members. After. All crew members in command and control should go to the bridge now. Attention to all guests. The alarm you just heard was our first stage emergency response alarm. This is the first alarm that we sound in case of an emergency to ensure that crew members with specific emergency functions report to their assigned stations. In most cases, our teams handle the situation and our cruise continues. There is nothing that guests need to do up at the info desk, if it's things like the specialty lunches or the bar crawl, the specialty lunch, you can sign up at the main dining room, go to the maitre d' station, or I believe you can call 88 on any ship's phone. For the bar crawl that's happening tonight, you can sign up at any bar on board, and they'll get charged to your, there's up charges for those events that'll get charged to your cabin. Thank you, everyone. Oh, by the way, the faster you do this drill, the faster you can get up to the sail away party at 4.30. So everybody uh, be nice and quick get to your muster stations. Thank you. Yes, so... Uh, 